Hello Commanders and welcome to this video for Infinite Lagrange. It is again as always time in the hub and in the hub is the perfect time to think about fleet setups. You got all your blueprints depending where you are season 1, season 10, it doesn't matter. But you will have to think about how to set up your fleet in the next season. You might have learned a few tricks, unfortunately you will not have any battle locks anymore but everything you learned should be used and we will start this um, video session again with a newer tea list. Um, not about cruisers or frigates because let's be honest we need to look differently on our ships that we have available and therefore we will start looking into the ships we can use as frontline ships, as tank ships. And I will show you the full um, tier list at once and we will go through it and explain why we have what we see here. Now the best frontline ship, I think there's no discussion about this, I didn't hear anything from anyone that doesn't agree with this. Um, the Carillion Sea, the stealth version of the Carillion is the king of the frontline. It's amazing evade um, values you can get there, um, just makes it S tier and there's no other ships that really can compete with them. Um, every time I fight with a really good player I can usually see Carillions in there um, tanking for the front line. Now maybe we do a very very quick um, change to one thing because there's one thing we need to know when we look into frontline ships. For this we have to switch over briefly to our excel sheet. Um, now apologies already I didn't make it nice it's just very quickly to get understanding. So we do have the attack priority here and um, we do have fighters, corvettes, frigates, destroyers, cruisers, battle cruisers and so on. Now let's ignore fighters and corvettes. Um, if we take a look, then you will see everything that targets small ships first will always start with destroyers and then it will go to frigates. There's no other order in attack. So if we have um, down here some ships, um, these are usually aircrafts and a few um, cruisers, they have aircrafts first and then they attack destroyers and frigs but it's still the same approach and um, as you can see we do not attack any cruiser or battle cruiser or anything before we go through these. What does that mean? If you don't have a frigate or destroyer in your front line the ship might depending on the weapon type jump to the middle or to the back row. If it uses missiles, torpedoes, it can ignore the front line and go to the middle or back line. Now if you do have Carillions, Carillions do cover everything that has frigates or destroyers in the targeting range and you will be fine. They will protect your middle and your back row for this. Um, then of course we should get something that protects us in the cruiser battle cruiser range in case we do use cruisers or carriers um, that are let's say endangered that are not very strong in tanking. Um, this goes especially if you use your carriers um, like the Predator or the Jaeger then you might want to add something um, that tanks for them. So if we look for the cruisers um, you see usually it will be battle cruisers, cruisers, um, it usually goes from large to small. So usually it starts at the largest um, scale we have, carriers, battle cruisers, cruisers, but still the same thing. If you have a cruiser in the front line, even if it's third priority in targeting, it will attack that cruiser in the front line before jumping to middle or back row in most cases. So that's just um, something you need to know. Let's go back to our tier list. So the Carillion is a frigate and it's the best frigate you can put into the front. Now if you don't have the Carillion there are other frigates and destroyers that do very very well. The RSB you will see them in a lot of good fleets. Um, they do a little bit more damage than the Carillion. They have 
Okay. Oh, honestly, they have good. They don't have amazing like the Carrion, but they have good evades. The Ruby C, um, Visor C version, um, it just does more damage. It's not really good in endgame, if you ask me. It will not survive very long. Definitely not as long as the Carillion or the Ares. Um, early in game, it is amazing because of the damage output it brings in. Um, the Carillion does not bring much damage. Now, that's it. Ruby and Carillion, I would say these are the two frigates we usually see most. Um, I will, you will not see an Eris in my setup because I do use a Carillion and as explained, the Carillion covers my frigate destroyer um, target priorities. And then for me, I will go for a cruiser. So we have four cruisers here. The Cas 066 is the cheapest cruiser you can get in front line and it is pretty solid. Doesn't do much damage, it's okay, but it survives very well. Um, I usually prefer the Chimera. Why do I prefer the Chimera? Um, it is much more expensive than the Cas. That is important to note, but it has an amazing damage output. It's a little bit like the Ruby. Um, we don't have a frigate here with amazing evades. We do have the IO with good evades. Um, I tried both Chimera and IO with tech points and I usually always go back to the Chimera. It survives longer. Um, the IO does better damage in certain situations. We have to yeah, say this, but I'm looking here into frontline tank capability and for me, I prefer to use a Chimera. I have other ships that bring in a lot of damage and the little extra damage I can get for the IO, I do not trade this versus survivability. Now, I know a lot of people love Sio and they use it and that's perfectly fine. It's a good ship there. Now in the B category, you will see um, a lot of additional destroyers. I know there's a lot of Taurus lavas out there, but um, the Taurus is doing amazing damage. It's a little bit like Sio, but Sio has good evades. The Taurus doesn't. The Taurus is just relying on its armor which sucks. Um, it's a destroyer. Destroyers don't have good armor. Um, so if you want a good survivability in your front line, go for the Ares, go for the Carillion. Um, the Taurus, yes, it brings in more damage. It's like the Ruby there. Um, I do have the Ruby assets there, mainly because of early in-game. Um, later it will die, unfortunately, too quick. You might be happy and the Carillions tank a little bit more if you have the Ares mixed with the Ruby. The Ares might be first targeted. Um, but yeah, that's it. You can mix like the Ares with the Taurus and hope that the Ares takes more damage than the Taurus. But as we saw before in the um, attack order, what we usually see, let's sort it again for our frigate destroyers. Destroyers get target first, then frigates. And that means it allows you to protect a little bit your ruby with the Ares, but the Ares and the Taurus will be on the same attack order. So therefore, that's why I have the Taurus in the B. Um, Taurus is perfect for flanking fleets. It is still able to tank a little bit. It brings in amazing damage. Um, and therefore, this is where it is really shining. The Eldebra B, it's, it has amazing high armor for a destroyer, but that's it. Um, it does okay damage. It's like a mini Chimera, so the damage is okay. It is not energy damage like the Taurus, so it's not as good as the Taurus, if you ask me. Um, it has higher armor, but lower damage. But overall, I would not recommend you to use these. Use A or S tier if you have um, for your front line. Ares C, FG300. FG300 is probably the cheapest frontline ship you can get. The B version, the armored version, is in the frontline, has a little bit of armor. Um, especially if you're a first, second, or third season player, um, you might want to use it um, together with a CAS 066 to protect your middle and back row from taking too much damage. Then the C and D row, these are still frontline ships, so criteria to be in this tier list is to be a frontline ship, but I don't really would recommend to use any of these in your frontline to help your fleet to survive. Now, as said before, if you want to have a flanking fleet, something that tanks um, maybe just a little bit or not at all, 
So let's say you have a fleet where you have Carillions, K066, um, maybe some Ares also, and you put this in with some repair fleet, uh, repair ships behind it, and then you have a fleet coming from the side and just adding the damage. Then using Tauros and everything, in my opinion, is perfect. Adding the IO there, perfect. It comes from the side, it doesn't take much damage, that's perfectly fine. Um, you will see here in D category, we even have like the Guardian C, um, the IO C, yeah, that's a siege type. Not really usable in my opinion. So if we look at the game here, um, I said there are some ships that just do not really make sense. Um, the IO, okay, all IOs are frontline, I understand this, but for me, like the most strange ship we can get um i think again it's because it's a pulse cannon the guardian it is in the front row so here you can check if you click on this um icon in the combat rolls oh um one second you can't see it let make me invisible for one moment then you know if it's a front line or a middle row. There's also one ship I did not mention because it is a battle cruiser, but um, the ST-59. It is a battle cruiser that is by standard in the middle row, but it brings in, um, it's not in the comment system, sorry. I think it is in the armor system. It does bring a strategy that puts it into the front row formation. Um, the ST-59 can be amazing. The armor on that thing and also the energy resistance are over the shards. Um, the Spear of Uranus does great damage. It also has great armor and energy resistance. It is not as extreme or it cannot get as extreme as the S50, ST-59, but still amazing um but if you have these ships probably you have already a very good understanding on how to um set up your fleet but yeah just in case you were wondering um you can still use of course also these but as mentioned before take a note of the attack order um you can't i wanted to look at the io so the io siege type um doesn't have very good armor it doesn't have much evade um, not really good. How do we know the attack order? When we click on the weapon and then on the eye for information, we do the, see the attack priority. And this is the order ships get attacked. So all of this combined, I think, should give you now a very good idea on why ships for front row are important, um, which ships you should use. And um, let me know in the comments what you think, what ships do you use, and um, what other roles do you think are important and should be covered in a video. Till then, as always, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and then I'll see you on the next video.